Are you hungry for creativity? Well, good news, because it is time for another Art Snacks Plus unboxing and challenge. If you want to get your own Art Snacks box, there's a link in the description. You can get a discount. With that, let's see what we've got in this month. Ooh, oh no, okay. So as usual, I'm very excited about this bubble wrap mailer, but I see something I'm a little scared of. A palette knife and some paint. If it's oil, I'm going to cry. Oh, and I guess we have a whole stinking pad of paper. That is so cool. First, our candy. It's a crybaby. Let's just give that to Sock Casey. I mean, it's a little sour, but I'm not going to cry about it. We got our cute little sticker, this time with a leaf pattern. Okay, and what is in the box? We have our Liquitex Professional Soft Body Acrylic. We've got our Princeton Velve Touch Series 3950 Synthetic Brush Flat Shader, very tiny. The Faber Castell Eco Pigment Pen in red. A Zebra Metallic Brush Pen in green metallic. And in the plus box, we have a RGM Italian Plus Painting Knife. Liquitex Professional Flow Aid Additive. And Fabriano White White Pad 8x8. So we have a nice square format. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, as much as I just want to jump into creating, let's watch our supplies because I don't know what's happening. Already have paint everywhere. Off to a great start. Okay, so let's just see what this blue acrylic looks like. I'm just really excited that it's acrylic and not oil, you guys. I just, whew. All right, there we go. So. Let's see about adding our liquid wax. Aw, I love that. I wish all paint tubes were in little tiny little squirt. I love it. So much easier than having a giant squirt. So for our flow aid, we need 20 parts water, one part liquid flow. So just a couple of drops in all of that water will be enough. So this really reminds me of watercolor. I guess if you add this much, I might try to disperse this a little better. So let's see what it looks like when it's very liquidy, very similar to watercolor. And actually what happens when you mix it with just straight water? Will it flow in between them well? No, it will not. Not surprisingly, it is acrylic, not watercolor. I guess you can get a variety of darknesses with it. Wow, I love, I love how fast acrylic dries compared to oil, you guys. It is amazing. Nice and red, okay. Very bright red. Okay, cool, so red and blue, and we also have our metallic green, which will be interesting, let's see. Oh my, okay. Metallic green, not a fan of metallic things, but this pen has exploded. My other hand is dirty, oh no. Ooh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't paint with the palette knife. Let's see what happens. If we want to get some, maybe texture in there. I'm not really good at working with the palette knife. I think I really struggle with, um, I don't know how to use a palette knife to put down things, but. Ooh, you know what that would be? I just got really excited. That looks like like, an, like a mountain or like a glacier or something. So that's really fun. What if we created like a giant person towering over... Okay, let's see, now that I'm sketching, we have maybe this character who is daintily trying to step over this mountain without killing all of the people that live on it. Ooh, how does that red go over that? Oh my gosh, look. Look at that red over the blue. It just looks so deep and nice. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. Okay, let's see. Game changer, perhaps, hmm. Just using this green pen like this creates the perfect little tree shape. Oh my gosh, I love it. All right, let's just play around with the palette knife and see what kind of shapes we can get. Maybe we can get a really interesting blob challenge happening. I already like this for like a mountain range. That looks so cool. 
I mean, what's that? What's that mountain range? What's that? What are these? Okay, what if? With all of these different little landscapes and stuff, because this one just looks like really large mountains with mountains in the background and I love it and I think it looks really cool especially these additional textures down here these look like little rocks in the field and it just looks so interesting and I love this accidental discovery so let's just continue to add texture to this mountain and see what happens and don't forget, we do have to add our little green trees, which really help kind of scale this illustration. Now you know just how big these mountains are compared to these little trees. Why do I love this so much? I wish I had a brown or a gray. These blue mountains are just kind of, kind of ridiculous looking, but yeah, no. Should we put a cloud in there? Is it gonna look weird? I really like the whole adding line work to something that is solid. It really just has a interesting effect to it and I like it. So this is a really interesting sort of illustration. This reminds me of when I painted over Polaroids because it was the same thing. I kind of created abstract pieces. I created a more illustrated look to abstract shapes like this, and some of them actually did include mountain ranges that were very similar. So this is a very fun exercise. I kind of want some creepy creature to be poking through here though. Let's see, with glowing white eyes, and he's just poking his head out. He's like, hey guys, what's up? Oh, now it just looks very devilish with those horns, oh my. I'm not really sure that this devilish creature added much to our drawing, but there he is peeking around the corner. Okay, I think this is enough doodling over here. I'm not really sold on any of these ideas. It was really fun to play around with these little doodles, but I kind of thought of a more interesting idea when it comes to playing with the transparency of the red over the blue. So let's just see about that. Let's break out a pencil. So I was thinking if I were to draw a character, let me just draw the skeleton really quick, hold on. Okay, not really sure what this pose is. I guess they're running. Do, do you think I, I think about what I'm drawing before I draw it? Absolutely not. We just, we just jump right in there. Okay, so we have this girl, she's trotting along. Maybe I should give her clothes before I act like I'm done. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to need a little protection for this next step. I'm just going to put a piece of paper under this one and we're going to do something a little bold, a little scary, but let's see what happens when I whew, take a deep breath, Casey. We're gonna take our palette knife and our paint and we're just gonna, we're gonna, wow, I already splattered paint everywhere and we are, so we're going to create this weird effect that is consuming her, I suppose. And we're going to do this on either side of her. Ooh, we're getting nice little splattery effects with this one. I wonder if I should go back on the other side and try to... <laughs> I'm just going to let this dry and I will be right back to continue working on this. Hold on, I decided to add a little bit more because it just needed some more interest on the top. And um, what I'm doing, which you will see later, I would like her head to be a part of this. I think it would be fun. So let's just get her head in on the action of what I'm doing. Oh my gosh, there's so much paint. Okay. Okay. Cool, and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the bottom because why not? The bottom corner is looking kind of empty. There you go, now we've got some blue down there. Awesome. Okay, continue drawing. I will be back. Okay, okay, everything is, I think, about as dry as it's going to get, though I'm still scared to touch it. For now, I'm going to go through and start inking our character. As you can see, I'm not drawing over the blue parts because I'm going to make her look like 
Well, I guess you can't really tell in that part. Hold on, let's do this part next. She's going to be, oh no, a skeleton. Ooh, spooky, spooky scary. That's not so bad, yeah? That looks like a, a hand for the most part, or at least the skeleton of a hand. So my main focus for this piece was that I really wanted to focus on the way that the red looks so different on top of the blue, and I wanted to play around with transparency. Don't know if I really truly succeeded on that, but this ended up being a fun little piece. I still want to add some diluted blue and different color to it to help separate, I guess, the different parts of the illustration because they're kind of running into each other at the moment. Plus we haven't used our green yet. Okay, I tried something crazy. I added some water to the marker, so now I've got a little pink color, so that's pretty great. Let's put some blush on her, her cheeks and her knees, just to add a little bit more of a fleshy color to her because she's very, she's very white. Wow, now I just want to do everything in different shades of red, but I do need to put green in here. And I also want to play around with our light blue color, which we haven't touched. So we do need to get back on that. Let's see really quick. It's really hard to get a smooth flat with the really thin paint, but I'm trying my best. Oh my gosh, this is turning out so pastel. It's actually really cute. You guys, the green worked out so well with water. So now I have a nice little pastel green color to use. Now we've got this adorable pastel illustration with random bones, just because why not? But the addition of the skeleton exposed area is pretty cool. I do like the abstract paint around the edges. I think it's really interesting. So I guess that's more fun than just a random character hanging out. Now we've got this really nice pastel palette happening and I'm really excited about it. <laughs> I can't believe how well it's working too. I added just a little bit of blue to make it a bluishy green teal color. So. Just because that green was just was so green. I think this pastel teal is really nice. Let's see if I can't shade the skirt a little bit with a darker blue. Probably just focus on very minimal spot shading here and there. These materials aren't the easiest uh, to work with together as far as putting them on top of each other. So now if I add the red and blue together, I can create a purple and do some shading. Why am I so impressed by mixing colors? <laughs> I think I'm just really shocked that I didn't think about adding water earlier to these markers and now I'm able to get so many more colors. I went into this box thinking I had blue, red, and a very dark green, but it turns out I actually have quite a few colors and now I'm able to go through and shade the piece and layer cute pastel colors. And I'm just, it's very fun. Art's really fun when you experiment. Okay, let's use some blue to shade the green. Wow, that teal color is amazing and I love it. Holy heck. Uh oh, it looks like the green isn't really taking so well to layering. It's kind of absorbing the color and spreading out. So a little unfortunate, but that's fine. Okay, wow, I am impressed with the range of colors that I was able to achieve. What the heck? The blue just seems kind of random now. I wonder if I should do some light blue in the background to suggest that there's more but fading. It's giving me such anime vibes. I kind of feel like I just want to add some random sparkles here and there on her. Just make it as cute as possible. I think she's about to go on a classic anime adventure. She's being absorbed into a dark world somewhere and then she's going to transform. Wow, I didn't think I was really much of a pastel person, but this is super cute and I kind of love it. Should we make it look like she's running a little bit? Let's see if that'll add anything. Maybe add some action or maybe I should stop adding stuff to it before I regret it. <laughs> She doesn't look like she's going very fast. Her hair isn't moving that much. I'm sure it's not so much that she's walking fast as it is whatever's turning her into a skeleton is doing strange things. 
And we are done with our sort of pastel-y, anime-inspired, whatever this is, illustration. I had so much fun once I started to dilute the other colors. It was just really interesting to see how the colors went from really intense and dark to really cute and fun. And that really changed the way I looked at this illustration. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to get your own Art Snacks box and get a discount code, click the link in the description. And with that, stay golden. Bye. And now a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons for all of their support. You guys are the best. If you want to be in the credits at the end of my videos, see secret sketches, coloring pages, early access, and more, check out my Patreon by clicking a link in the description. Thank you guys all so much for the support. Bye.